Just sit right back and you hear a tale. A good time, really good tale. Really good tale, really good fun. Jive talking for everyone. Pinky attack. Let's jive. That was probably the worst one that I've done so far. By God, I don't know what the hell I'm doing anymore. Welcome back, one and all, all and one. We are one. We are all here on the uh, the old podcast. Jive talking with Shane Diablo, episode 67. I think the last episode, I said 65, and it was technically 66, so this is 67. Episode 67. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in. And and really, really just kind of uh, tr- trying to... Um, uh, dare yourself to get through this podcast for some people. Some people like to listen to it and uh, enjoy. For them, I say thank you, and uh, if you want to hear your comments read on the podcast, you go check out the um, the YouTube video of the episode. Now, I'm going to ask that you sit through the entire episode before placing a comment, or you can just go to the comments or whatever, however it floats your boat, baby. Uh, welcome back. Here we go, Dave Mustaine, and um, things are really starting to heat up, I think, because you got Jeff Young over there talking about pathological liar and how he can't play guitar and he can't hit this. Then you got Dave Ellison, and he's talking about things like uh, Metallica always led the way, Megadeth never led the way. So he's poking and prodding at Dave Mustaine, and now Dave Mustaine says... Love. He loves having James Lomenzo back in Megadeth after that weird shit that happened with David Ellison. Uh, and that weird shit would be, he was, I guess he was online and he met some gal on the internet and he was, uh, they got on one of them Zoom calls together. And she was of age. She was a, a gal that was interested in him and he was interested in her. And she, I guess she said, well, pull out your tally whacker and let's have a peek at Pixie Doodle at it. And he says, yes, I think that would be quite enjoyable. And I don't know the rest of the story, but that's the gist that I got out of that. And I could be completely wrong, but I don't think I'm too far off. Who doesn't love James Lomenzo? I mean, I, 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 I've talked about the guy several times. He's, he was in White Lion, so the hair metal fans out there are going to love James Lomenzo. He was in Megadeth and also now is back in Megadeth, so you got to love him for that. And of course, he was on The Amazing Race, season 21, I believe. And he was, um, it was him and his uh, friend, Abba. They did eight legs of The Amazing Race before they got into a bit of trouble. I want to say that was in Russia when they left their backpacks in the, the, ca- the taxi cab that had their passports in it. And they, if and everyone that knows Phil Cajon, or Keon, or whatever his name is, the host, everyone knows if you watch The Amazing Race, you know this. If you don't land on the finishing mat with all of your proper identification papers with you, I'm sorry, he will not accept you and say, congratulations, you are blank uh, uh, team to arrive. Okay? Now, let's get into this. Dave Mustaine loves having him around. What is Davey going to say? In a new interview with Heavy Magazine, Dave Mustaine of Megadeth, which will perform in Australia later this month as part of the Knotfest Australia, was asked what has changed with his band since the last time Megadeth played in the country back in 2015. David responded as transcribed, well, a lot, a lot, I would have to say. We've had a lineup change, changes, and every time we did that, the person that came in was better. When we parted ways with the drummer before Dirk Ver, 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 Verburen, Verburen, a current Megadeth drummer, it was the person before Chris Adler, Lamb of God. Yeah, whatever happened to him? He should have stayed. He was in there doing all right, wasn't he? Which was Sean Drover. We tried to get the Rust in Peace lineup back together. It didn't work with Nick Mensa, former drummer. Nick went off the... Uh, uh, Nick went off one way and went. We, we went the other. We contacted Adler and asked him. I thought uh, Nick Menza was dead. Am I having some kind of a bizarro freak out uh, brain brain twister? 
We contacted Adler, asked him if he wanted to play in, in the other record. No, ram. And then maybe contact Nick again and have him on tour with us since he couldn't really do the record. That didn't work out either. So we had Chris to do the record, Dystopia, and stay a while while we were doing that. Chris and his band parted ways. And they did hands. We didn't know if Chris was going to stay with us or stay with them. Of course, we wanted him to stay with Lamb of God. Oh, you wanted him out? I'm sad that he left and that there's any kind of distance between the family. I do think that Art Cruz, current Lamb of God drummer, is an amazing drummer. Do not get me wrong about that. Please do not get me wrong because I do think that. And then, after the Chris Adler recommended Dirk, and Dirk is, in my mind, the best drummer we've, we've had since Gar Samuelson, he's a big fan of Gar, and that is the power that drives Megadeth. That jazz metal, not like rock metal, Nick was super talented and powerful drummer, and he, fortunately, was able to do a lot of those jazz hooks, too. So, we're almost at that magic that we did when Gar was there. But we definitely had something that Gar did not, which was the power that Nick Menza possessed. My God, that was a... Dave, you was really giving it to us there. Is he going he, to keep going? Should we keep reading this? Let's, re let's just read this bit here. Same thing if you go down the line with the bass playing. David Ellison, former Megadeth bass player, was in the band. Oh, I don't like him. He was out. James Lomenzo, current bass player, came in. He was out. Ellison came back because the Drover brothers, drummer Sean and guitarist Glenn, kept pressuring me to do this. Get Ellison back. He came in and we had that weird shit that happened. I had Steve DiGiorgio come in and record the record. That's right, because there was something like he went, had him redo all his bass track, David Ellison's uh, bass tracks. For the sick, the dying, and the dead. And James is back, and I love that he's back. The singing is fabulous on stage. He was also on episode, season 21 of Amazing Race, if you didn't know. It's really good. He actually can sing really well, so he helped encourage me to sing. And then Kiko Leroyo, guitar, as you know, after I parted ways with Chris Broderick. Is that Chris Broderick of Godflesh? Can't be the same Chris Broderick, right? Am I thinking of something? Justin Broderick? Chris Bro Why am I? What, what's going on there? Uh, I mean, where do, where do you go from having former Megadeth guitarist Marty Freckin' Friedman and Chris Pollan? And it's time to make a guitar player change again. So, Kiko, I saw a video online of Kiko actually naked. He was laying in the bed. It was so good. It was on his OnlyFans. No, he didn't say that. I saw a video only of Kiko actually being a video of that, right? And I watched it. And I went, fuck, I've got to get in touch with this guy. The funny thing was that when I contacted him, he said that he had been talking to Ellison, that punk ass. No. So when I talked to Ellison the next time, I said, what the fuck's wrong with you, man? Why didn't you tell me you knew this guy? So that was a great addition to the band. Kiko and James really play well together. And Kiko and Dirk have an amazing ability to play those crazy riffs together. Of course, we can always be better. So we all go into the jam room and we sit down and every day and we try and work on little bits and pieces of songs. Of course, I take the credit for those and Dave Mustaine credit. Uh, and our record producer is out with his own, the road, as a, our music director, helping us keep our chops up. What? I really goofed that. And our record producer is out with us on the road as our music director, like a Doc Severinsen type, helping us keep our chops up. Mustaine fired at Ellison from Megadeth in May 2021, just days after sexually tinged messages and an explicit video footage involving the bass player were posted on Twitter. Shortly before Ellison was dismissed from Megadeth, he released a statement on Instagram denying all social media chatter that he groomed an underage fan. 
Ellison was in Megadeth for the band's inception in 1983 to 2002 and again from 2010 until his latest exit. Last September, Megadeth latest album, The Sick, The Dying and the Dead, debuted at the top of the charts during its first week of sales, taking the number three spot on the Billboard 200, as well as a number one on top album sales. Top current album sales, top rock and alternative albums, top rock albums, and top hard rock albums. The Sick, The Dying and the Dead was the highest charting Megadeth album of all time around the world. What? That's insanity to me. Uh, notching number one in Finland, number two in Australia, Poland, Switzerland, and Scotland. Number three in the UK and more. Wow. So there you have that. All right, David, you love James Lomenzo. We get it. How about this little story here? I did a little ticky took on this. Jeff Scott Soto was at a Yingbe Mountain concert. And... Uh, Ingve was going to cancel the show if he was going to stick around. I had to read this story, but I had to get on the TikTok and go, guys, guys, you want, you know, you're not going to believe this, you know. It's a, it's a great one minute way to tattletale on everything, right? In a new interview with YouTube channel Brazilian music journalist Igor Miranda, ex Ingve Malmsteen singer Jeff Scott Soto, who has had an acrimonious, I learned it, Acrimonious relationship with the legendary Swedish Swedish guitarist once in recent years reflected on his claim that Ingve threatened to cancel his concert in May 2022 in Agora Hills, California, after finding out his former bandmate was in attendance. Jeff said, "I thought it was kind of funny. I mean." When I posted about it on social media that night, I was doing it because I was so, it, it was so unbelievable. I was laughing. I was like, I have to share this with the world. I have to share this because it is so ding dong damn silly. But then to be called a liar about it, it made it even more funny to me because why would I lie about something ab like that? It says something about that, but it would be like that. Why would I even care to go to any extreme to go see somebody who doesn't want to see me or doesn't want me around them? People, he just gave you the, 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 the advice of life. If you have people in your life that are, are nemesis and don't want to be around you and you don't want to be around them, then don't do it. Get out. Of course, I was there to see my friend's band play. They invited me. It's a place that I go to all the time. I didn't feel there was any harm going to be done if I just kind of stayed in the corner. And of course, when the word was out that I was there, I was told if I'm going to remain in the building, the show would be canceled. It's a thousand, one billion percent truth behind that. Two guys came up to me that work there, that I know that work there. They said, I don't know what this is about, Jeff, but I'm sorry to tell you that we've been informed if you don't leave, the show's going to be canceled and I was going to leave anyways. I was going to leave anyways, okay? I was there to watch my friend's band. When they were finished, I was paying my bill to the bartender, who's also, by the way, a very good friend of mine. And everybody watched that happening and we were just like, can you believe this? Golly wally ding dongs. Jeff continues, I wasn't there for the Ingve show. I wasn't planning to stay. I didn't sneak in. None of that. Of course, it was so silly to me. It was so hilarious to me. It was, it was, but it's unfortunate that it has to be that because I'm not looking to keep talking about this or to keep elevating it or to keep it getting news from it. I want peace from everybody in my life. Good. This guy's a, he should be a wizard. He should be a guru or something. He's spitting all kinds of good stuff. Anybody that has any issues with me, I would love to just give them a hug and move on with life and leave this world, leave this planet with no enemies. I'm telling you, he's a, he, this guy's a swami. This guy's, a, this guy, he's got pearls of wisdom. But, oh, he's going to bring us down. But, unfortunately, that's not the case on that side. 
When Soto first po posted about the Agora Hills concert last May, he wrote, Hey, my peeps, here's a fun little ditty for you. I went to the Canyon Club tonight, my local watering hole for the past 21 years. It's like my cheers, where everybody knows your name. Ba -da 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 -ba -ba. I actually went to see one of the support bands, who were killer, by the way. I has Why didn't you tag them, buddy? You keep going on about your bands, you could give them a pimp. They make it on the Blabbermouth. They make it on the Jive Talking with Shane Diablo podcast, by God. I hesitated on going because my former <clears throat> boss was headlining, but I was not planning to stay anyway. Well, word got to him I was in the house, and I was kindly told as long as I am present, the show would be canceled. Now I've seen it all. I left as planned, but it's kind of funny. I just had to share the ludicrous, not real word, but seemed to fit the de detail that continued in 2022. I laughed all the way home, Jeff added. Really? He was in his, maniacally laughing in his car when they says, you got to go. He got, <laughs> no, come on. Come on, bud. You were going, what a little prick. You were talking to yourself. You're driving in your car. You're talking to yourself. You said, what a freaking prick that guy is, man. He's a real dick. I should tweet that, that he's a dick. But Jeff wouldn't say those things because he's a Swami type. I'm sure this will be shared like crazy, but I couldn't help but sharing it all with you. I want to know the following day. Here we go. This is the part I want to get into. The following day, Malmsteen disputed Soto's account of what happened in Agora, writing on his Facebook page, Hmm, I think some people are making up stories to be in the media again. Kids, don't believe made up BS from people who are trying to stay relevant. He's not important for me to cancel my show to my fans. On the other hand, I was told by my agent that he snuck in there without paying on the charge. So the security threw him out. Certain people make up stories. Turn up at shows get kicked out by security because they snuck in the venue without paying, by the way. Then turn around, make up a story, and try and grab media attention. So, people are sick. Stop talking to me and get help. So there you have that. When one of the fans questioned Ingve about his claim that Jeff has to struggle to appear relevant on the scene today and challenge Malmsteen to compare audience response to said projects and release to, uh, uh, to what Ingve has accomplished during the same period, Malmsteen responded, Hmm, let me think. In the last 15 to 20 years, I have been on the American Billboard charts every single time I have released a record, including my last one. Being played theaters, promoters are happy. On top of that, I have made mega deals. I'm telling you, mega deals, including signature models with major companies such as Marshall, Fender, Ovation, Dunlop, Seymour Duncan, Lewitt Microphones, and the list could go on and on. On top of that, I have won, oh, I have won awards for the most magazine covers ever in the history of the certain guitar magazine. Would you like to me to carry on? None of me and my reputation for the last 40 years, everything this man says is a lie with the intent to do damage. Uh-oh. I have not once spoken about him, and nor have any interest to simply because he's not important to me. He Yet, he can't stop talking about me on a regular basis. Everyone's talking about each other on the regular basis, aren't they? Old, old Jack, Jack, and, Jack, Jack and Mark Kendall and Jack Russell there, he's always talking about me on the internet. Dave Mustaine, they're all talking about you, aren't they? Making up stories because he's not had any relevant success on his own, he tailgates on other people. He needs to just move on 
and stop talking to me. Oh, I almost forgot. I have over half a million listeners on Spotify every month alone. His, let me look it up. Oh no, only 40K. Oh, he says his, let me look it up. Oh, only 40K. Yep, he needs to keep slandering me a bit more. Uh, Soto later uh, returned to social media to respond to Ingve with the following uh, missive. I will put this to rest after clarifying a few things. God forbid anyone think I am trying to drum up press, especially by berating someone in the process. See, he's very nice. I don't know that we want to read all this. Let's just get a little taste of what he's going into, but this guy's going to have uh, great juicy wisdom bits and stuff. I post my past on social media to celebrate and share the pride I have for my musical endeavors for the, for the past four decades. I don't and don't need to ride anyone's coattails stock or trying to drum up press for myself. I have my music and the current things I partake in to do this. Everything else I share is a celebration. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, lastly, I went to the venue to see someone play who is very near and dear to me. When I found out who the headliner was, I decided it best not to go as I didn't want to ruffle any feathers. Then I decided I will go, but leave before said headliner begins, as I had no interest in seeing that part of the evening anyway. Okay, we're, we're done with this, okay? We're done. Guys, you want to talk about Nikki Six? You want to talk about Motley Crue? You want to talk about them going into 2031? It's right here. You're, I just picture, you're invited, but you really can't go. He's saying, no. He said, did I put my finger? Where did I put my fingers, Nikki? That's Vince. Vince has got a guitar on. He's got, a, he's got his index finger on the string there like he knows what's going to happen if he plucks it. He said, what am I doing there, Nikki? Am I hitting a G spot? Nikki Six wants Motley Crue to keep going until at least 2031. This isn't a final tour. In an interview with Brazil's A Radio Rock conducted this past December, but only now uploaded to the YouTubing, Motley Crue bassist Nikki Six was asked about the possibility of him and his bandmates writing and releasing new music. He responded, We just did those four songs for the Dirt soundtrack. We're pretty much locked down right now. We're having conversations beyond 2023. So what's 2024 look like for us in a touring capacity? Are you asking the question? As far as new music, I think new music always comes when the band is getting along. We get along so great now. Oh boy. We've been having the best time. We spend time together. We go out to dinner. So now they're saying old John Five has reunited their juices. Tommy Lee, Motley Crue drummer, just had his 60th birthday party last October down in Mexico, and he invited a small group of his very good friends, and I was there, and a bunch of cool, uh, cool Tommy's friends, and a bunch of cool Tommy's friends, and all of our wives were there. John Five came in, and it was just cool to be able to not talk business, be in rehearsal, get on the phone, talk the take, talk about the photo shoot or video, it was just hanging out, walking on the beach, grabbing each other's ass, tickling each other's privates, and we had some sweet conversations. Me and Tommy and Vince had this conversation. Okay, now he's, he's not saying we're not putting John 5 in there, right? John 5 didn't get to say nothing. They walked away from him. Tommy, Vince, come over here. Get away from John 5. Let's talk about the future. I uh, had this conversation. I said, I go, what are you guys doing for the next eight years? And everyone's laughing. And Vince says, I'm going to go do my band. I'm going to go do Vince Neil band if we're not doing this. Uh, and everybody's laughing. I don't know, I said. Why don't we just keep going, guys? Let's just take it to 50 years, man. Years, 50 years since the band's inception, which will be in 2031. 
So this isn't a final tour, Six clarifies. What does that look like, question mark? Are you asking the question? I have no idea. I'm just telling you. You have the band saying, we're having a blast. Why stop? So there you have that. You get the John 5 in there. See, I did a TikTok where I called the... Uh, um, I called Mick Mars an old. I said they all oh, they fi I was said they got rid of the old dusty guy, and they got this new model in there. Boy, people did not like that. They were like, "He's not an old dusty guy, you son of a bitch." But I'm just like, no, I'm just making the. I'm, I'm saying out with the old, in with the new as well. The the only point I was trying to make. But anywho, I wanted to check into this real quick here. Uh, Shannon Larkin doesn't know if Godsmack can afford to go outside of America. This shocks me for some reason. We've never made money in Europe. That shocks me. Because they've sold tons of records and all of that. So I wanted to see if we could get down there and get into the investigatory situation and see what's happening with it. Because I feel like they should have, they should be just like in the hard rock world, they should be up there. I mean, with all the rest of them, right? I mean, I want to say Alice in Chains, but then I say, wait, no. And then I want to say Motley Crue. That feels like something like that. Def Leppard, Motley Crue, right? Mm. Shut that damn thing up. In a new interview with Metal Roos, Godsmack drummer Shannon Larkin was asked if there are any plans of him and his bandmates to tour Australia. In support of the re their recent release album, mate, Lightning Up the Sky. He responded like this, not yet. And the honest truth is we can't afford to come. It sucks for us because we're here. We're a big, we're big in America. We're an American band. The radio loves us here. If it weren't for them, we wouldn't be a big band. And we didn't really have the success worldwide that we have here. Well, that explained the whole damn thing. Let's hear what else he's got to say. But I, I really feel like that just explained it all. They're just really, they've sold all them millions of records more in the U.S. than anywhere else. We don't run a bunch of tapes. We don't do that show. He's getting in on the laptops. We don't run a bunch of tapes. We don't do that shit. We're a live band, but we do like to do, but what we do like to do is people pay these exorbitant ticket prices and we, and when they come to see us, we have a big show and we blow shit up and pyro and we have video screens and there might be lasers that night. We have uh, moving drum risers, all this shit that's part of us and it's been us. Then we go to England and play or Australia and play, and we've got a rag behind us and a drum set, and it's not a crutch. We still we still went and we do it, but we never had the growth to where we were big enough, say in Australia, to come there and present what we do like us live, like we do live. This badass show that we've always done, and that's as much part of it as the instruments. We perform, and we love it, love to do it. Okay, I'm done with that. Uh, very so, ever so quickly, before we get into your comments, and it is light in the loafers uh, in the uh, comments this time around, but they're all pearls and gems. Paul Diano, if you got some kind of old footage, I can't wait to watch this. Paul Diano's documentary maker is looking for archival material from early days of Iron Maiden. So anyone out there that says, hey, you know, I brought an old uh, reel to reel to the shows there. And I, you know, I filmed it on, you know, 8 millimeter or something. You could uh, get a hold of this guy. Apparently his name is Wes Orshaki co-director and producer of the acclaimed 2010 film, which I watched, Lemmy. All right, he's, it's about uh, the Motorhead icon is looking for an archival material of Paul Diano in the earliest days of Iron Maiden through the mid-2000s for his upcoming documentary about the former Maiden singer. I, it, I'm, I'm stoked. Early today, Orshoki took to his Facebook page to write, as many of you already know, I've been working on a film on an ex-Iron Maiden frontman, Paul Diano. 
For several years now, I'm wrapping up the film now, and I'm looking for an archival video of photos, pro or amateur, and audio of Paul in the earliest days of Maiden through the mid-2000s, but especially 70s, 80s, 90s. So he's doing, okay, I like this, because he's doing Battle Zone. Ah, don't want to know, I'm breaking free. He's doing a Paul Diano uh, spectacular. So he wants 70s, 80s, 90s, the rarer, the better. Looking to connect with hardcore Maiden collectors who might have some video or audio interviews or live footage I mean, he's asking for a lot. He says he's just about finished with it. As many of you know, I've been working on an Iron Maiden for, for several years now, and he's asking now for, for footage. Uh, maybe you bought a bootleg a long time ago, and it's in your garage or your garage or closet. Maybe you were friends with Paul and or Maiden and filmed something yourself and never even thought about sharing it with someone. Maybe you took some photos of yourself, possibly naked. Uh, no, uh, maybe you took some photos of Paul in the 80s or 90s, but never thought about him again. They don't have to be as beautiful as these Paul napkin shots, but they can be super, they can be super raw. Even if you think they're crap, I want to see what you got. I'd love to hear from you all, all of you guys. If you have anything like this, please contact me. Please contact me here at 3countfilms at gmail.com. So if just by some bizarro chance, someone that's listening to this goes, by God, I've never listened to this Shane guy before, and I have... Some old 8mm film of Paul Diano that is in supremo condition. And I never would have known that this happened unless I listened to Shane's podcast. So for that, by God, I'm getting a hold of him. There you have that, Paul Diano, right? We love that guy. It's time for them comments. Let's get into it. This is going to be a shorter episode this week. Um, but, uh, but we do it because we love it. And we do it because it's... Something. Mike Buchanan, our pal, coming in here. Uh, as of this posting, I'm sitting here at work eating pizza and listening to metal as usual. I paused the music to watch the video, so now I'm typing one-handed, eating pizza, and watching Shane. It's a great day at work. If there is such a thing, I agree. Oh, and it's now been about three years since I've been alone here. Huh? Since all of my co-workers have been working from home. That's how you get to work from home, baby. Is when they all pack up and go home. You say, shit, I'll come into the office. Everything in the vending machines are for me. Good on you. First off, we didn't get a joke from uh, last week's sign you read. Oh, that's right. Yes, the sign off. Uh, the joke that I read, it was on a... Uh, let me see if I can remember this now. Uh, the, the, the joke that I read on the uh, drive-in was... Um, uh, uh, what, what, do you, what do you call a teacher who is embarrassed to fart in public? A private tutor. So there's that joke for you. Yes, but I'm glad that you uh, reminded me of that because I would have just forgot it again. Anyways, KISS will keep on rocking until the day they are pushed out on stage in wheelchairs. They are money hungry. You wanted the best. You got the best. Well, now be the slogan for Depends. Uh, yes. You what? You wanted the best. You got the best. Will now be the slogan for Yeah, because Gene will get over there and, and he'll say, let's get this. He'll do a commercial for him, too. He's not too proud for that. If he ever gets incontinent, he will, he'll, he'll do a commercial. Uh, when your solo career doesn't do well, beg to rejoin your old band. I'm kidding, by the way. I've seen Marty with Megadeth many times. Miss those days of Megadeth. I never got to see him. The last time I saw Megadeth was so far so good, so what? I'm pretty sure. Something vaguely tells me, no, that's wrong. 
but I, I'm not, I can't be sure. Uh, and then he's got one here that says, What? I can't hear you over the sound of through the fire and flames blasting through my speakers. Maybe Frederic is just plain sick of playing that song and wanted to go play good music for a change. That's the song from Guitar Hero, right? From the fire to the flame. You know, you see those weird kids online and they're blistering it. Uh, and then they go and learn how to play real guitars, don't they? Uh, who let Tommy fly the plane? Yeah, he's up there smoking and stuff. Okay, do I want to click this? I think I kind of do, and I didn't pre-prep prepare. Here is the Ralph Macchio Crossroads solo. Mm, yes, really know what this thing is. See, look at the wholesome face on this guy. This guy, you know, is the Jesus character. But that other guy, my God, looks like the damn devil. And I think he's that creepy, this guy right here. Have you ever seen a movie called, uh, God, yeah, those teeth give it away. It's like having a damn devil. Uh, get over there and watch the rest of that. By the way, uh, just, um, oh yeah, see, I goofed it. See? When I hit that, I click it off my dang thing there, Mike Buchanan. Uh, anyways, yeah, go watch that. Um, if they ding me for it, you're going to go, Shane, you didn't play the clip because I had to edit the clip out. Uh, and now, but this is the most important part anyways, isn't it? And now you're jam talking jokes of the week. My wife rearranged the, the, la the labels on my spice rack. Haven't confronted her yet, but the time is coming. Is cumin. That's a good one. I've ex I've I've uh, processed it in my brain. Acceptable. I was in a taxi today, and the driver said, "I love my job. I'm my own boss. Nobody tells me what to do." So I said, "Turn left here." That <laughs> that is good because I'm in a truck all day long, and I say that I like my job because I'm my own boss. And no one's, you know, I get there, I get my stuff, and I'm gone. And then I come back and I punch out. Uh, and then you told him, turn left. I did get a ride home in a Tesla, by the way. I took an Uber the other day, and I, you know, because it's still on the bicycle. My car's dead. Amazing, amazing being in that Tesla. I got, uh, man. Um, I asked my dad how he felt about having the best son in the world. He told me to ask my granddad. Oh, that's, that's a double layer right there. My son wanted to know what it's like to be married. I asked him to leave me alone. And when he did, I asked him why he was ignoring me. Pretty damn good, I gotta say. And finally, your underwear is much too tight and very revealing, I said to my wife. She replied, wear your own then. Oh, yeah. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Ding. Get in the heart. I will not forget at that time. Miss Althea coming in here. And look at you guys with all the short comments and the short stuff. And the sh uh, Dumbstruck Fool says she has a short list this week. Kiss will be in my area at the CFG Bank Arena, formerly the Baltimore Arena, formerly the Royal Farms Arena, formerly the Baltimore Arena again. On November 29th, I'll be at home saving money and other assorted angst. Your Doc McGee sounded very Don Maxwell Smart. Okay. Maxwell Smart Don Adams. Your Don Maxwell, Maxwell Smart Adams. Yeah, see? Uh, every time you get into anything about bands from Germany or any country in that general region... You lean into that foreboding accent. I always get a hankering to watch a Bella Lugosi movie. Don't know why. Oh, uh, maybe I sound a bit like uh, Bella Lugosi uh, before, you know, when he was only about 70. Um, I got a little bit of a chuckle out of the Crew Def Leppard Jet video only because I had just watched the 1970s disaster movie Skyjacked. 
Ooh, that sounds interesting. Which was considered a poor man's airport. Oh yeah, that's right. And then they, didn't they do, didn't they do airplane as a goof on airport at the time? Uh, let's see, Skyjack, which was considered a poor man's airport at the time. If only the clip had ended with Tommy going, diverted this plane, divert this plane to Moscow. That would have been epic. Divert that plane to Moscow. You know what I'm going to say next with his penis. With his penis. We're going to Moscow, bros. Uh, and uh, Vermont bread. Uh, Vermont bread. Uh, he's been around a long time. I know the name, but it's, I hate to click the thing because uh, it's, I'm seeing the little atsy doodles there. Dave M. is not that chummy with any of his bandmates who he considers employees. Marty did the solo for Breadline, I believe on the album Risk. The record company wanted Dave's solo on the song. They swapped it out and did not tell Marty, oh, I love nugs like this, who only learned at the playback. It hurts his feelings, and he was gone all those years. Yeah. Um, what was that other thing they carved off? Uh, didn't they... Uh, because Dave's been known to do that, right? He's carving bits and pieces off. He did that to David Ellefson on the Sonic Boom record, or what What was that called? Sonosphere? Sonic Sonic Panic? Panic? Pa I don't know. Uh, but that's it, you guys. That's it for this one. Thank you, thank you once again for tuning in. I hope you you, you had some, some joy, some chuckles, some some fun with me. And, I, and by God, I hope you come back next Saturday, okay? Can we get like a guarantee on that of some sort? Let's see. I just want to rock, man. No. Oh. Oh. John talking with your friend Shane D. Clap, clap. John talking with your friend Shane D. Clap, clap. I like the claps. I got the clap. I got the clap. We got the clap. John talking baby shit.